So for the next medical condition we'll be looking at is the androgen insensitivity syndrome and its embryological basis. So this was actually an exam question, but sadly due to YouTube rules, we can't discuss this with pictures, all right? So if you want to see pictures of androgen insensitivity syndrome, you simply comment and I will show you how you can be able to get those pictures, right? So we'll talk about the androgen insensitivity syndrome and its embryological basis, that's basically the cause because this actually happened when the individual was developing, okay? So when you're talking about embryological basis, it's like the abnormalities that happen within that time that led to the patient being what? Androgen insensitive. So for the while we were saying this androgen insensitivity syndrome is a condition where a person is for genetically male, all right? So you're having one X and one Y chromosome, quite all right, okay? But the person is resistant to male hormones, that's the androgen, okay? So this resistance will prevent the development of male external genitalia and secondary sexual characteristics you get. So this androgen sensitivity syndrome is caused by what? Mutations in the androgen receptor. So it could be that the androgen is being secreted, but the receptors are resisting it to get. So what are the embryological basis? That's basically things that went wrong when the person was developing that led towards this uh, mutation in the androgen receptors. It could be that uh, during normal male fetal development, the presence of Y chromosome and SRY chromosome gene triggers the formation of testes, okay? It's like a story, we are heading somewhere. These testes can produce androgens such as well, testosterone, which signals the development of male sex organs, right? So, but in androgen sensitivity syndrome, the body cells are unable to respond to this androgen. And this is due to what? Defective androgen receptors. Okay? So, this results in the development of female external genitalia despite the presence of male genetic makeup. Right? So, what are the types? You could have a complete androgen sensitivity syndrome where the individuals have female external genitalia but lack internal female reproductive. You understand? The outside is female, but the inside has the ovaries and uterus. All of that is not there. You could have the partial androgen sensitivity syndrome. Where the individuals have what the ambiguous genitalia that may appear as a mix of male and female characteristics. Then um, you could also have mild androgen sensitivity syndrome, where individuals have what male genitalia both present with minor symptoms such as gynecomastia, having big and large okay, breast. That's the lumen of the breast tissue. Okay. So what are the clinical manifestations in infancy? In cases of this androgen syndrome, the condition may be identified, but an external hernia is found, revealing testes in the word, in renal canal. So you might have only certain testes here. Yeah. Puberty. Individuals with this androgen sensitivity syndrome may experience primary or amenorrhea, where the like absence of menstruation, or there may be lack of development of secondary sexual characteristics. Okay. Adults. So, infertility is actually the most common feature due to the absence or dysfunction of the gonads. Okay? Management is hormone replacement just to induce for secondary cellular characteristics appropriate to the individual's gender identity. Okay? Surgical intervention is where you remove the only testes just to prevent what potential malignancy could turn into cancer. Psychological support. Um, you basically counsel the individual just to address any what psychosocial aspects of the condition, right? So I think this is it for androgen sensitivity syndrome, discussion on it and its embryological basis.